As the 2024 Grammys unfolded, my millennial heart found solace in the nostalgic echoes of Mariah Carey's opening presence and the surprising triumphant finale by the enduring Celine Dion. The remnants of the vocal trinity graced music's biggest night yet. Amid the applause, an uncomfortable realization settled in, a stark recognition of the transformed musical landscape and one resounding question echoed in my mind. Where are the divas? The very notion, once synonymous with musical royalty, now appears distant, almost dated. But herein lies the crux of our exploration today, a deep dive into the endangered species of female superstars who once reigned supreme atop of the charts. What happened to the divas? I was born in 1990 right in the middle of the diva stronghold on culture. The previous decade saw the 80s welcome back numerous divas. Aretha had a major comeback into the charts, reminding everyone why she was the queen. Patti LaBelle scored her first chart topper in a decade while achieving a platinum album. And Tina made one of the greatest comebacks of all time, selling out stadiums and standing firm in direct opposition to the youth culture of MTV. The charts were dominated by powerhouse vocalists. Whitney Houston had seven consecutive number one singles, a record that still stands today. And to top it all off, I Will Always Love You became the best-selling single by a woman ever. Mariah Carey was the first female to debut at number one on the Hot 100, achieving 15 number ones in the 90s, including her duet with Boys to Men that spent four months atop of the charts and Celine Dion's Titanic smash hit won record of the year and sold more than 18 million records. Divas held the top spot on the charts for longer periods than any of their contemporaries, positioning themselves in a class reserved for very few, pop music's elite. Fast forward to recent years, and the pinnacle of chart success relies on different metrics and talents. The likes of Taylor Swift, Rihanna or Dua Lipa have climbed to the top of the pyramid to redefine music, but... Why? I think a big reason is that the notion of diva went from being a badge of excellence to a mark of elitism. Along with the grandiose vocal abilities, stunning gowns and key changes, accusations of high maintenance antics became a constant media story and regardless of how true all these accusations are, they definitely hurt the diva ideal. In fact, the term has become an insult in and of itself with some women who were once viewed as divas moving away from the term themselves. I'm a diva. And You're I'm, not a diva. No, 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 I'm not. I'm never willing to be. I mean, I know the divas. I, I've met some of them and I just moved the other way. Covid restrictions helped to cement this notion. The now notorious Imagine video as Gal Gadot assembled a team of celebs to sing John Legend's Imagine anthem. Just like Madonna felt detached from reality as she described the coronavirus being a great equaliser from a luxury bathtub, the Imagine cover received almost unanimous vitriol. Covid for many unravelled the celebrity facade and how out of touch they often are from the regular public and how much attention they crave. For generations, celebrities were seen as existing somewhere over the rainbow. Some were so unattainable, and we glorified them for this godlike quality. But unattainable isn't that cool anymore. Being relatable is a new powerful currency, and that's something that goes against the very nature of an old-school diva. Another major change is the upbringing of new pop stars. As Black Music Archive discusses in his video Why the New Girl Can't Sing, the contention presented is intriguing. So many of our favourite divas cultivated their musical foundation in the church. Years of choir practice, church performances and often competitions allowed singers to hone their technique, their stamina and their musical interpretive wit. And as society becomes more secular, an unforeseen casualty is the loss of this musical aptitude. As a result, the latest TikTok phenomenon is plucked from the internet and dropped on stage with no legitimate training or experience on how to carry their voice or entertain overall. The intersection of contemporary music and economic dynamics also impacts the cultivation of enduring diva figures. The shift towards a more digitally driven industry compounds the need for continuous output. Unlike the era of classic divas where artists could invest substantial resources and time into sculpting high-quality albums, the 
the current climate demands a relentless torrent of content necessary to remain afloat in an oversaturated market of shifting TikTok trends. And these fleeting trends force artists to tailor their sound to match the current zeitgeist, often hurting the development of diva figures known for their distinctive style. Homogeneity prevails. The dominance of streaming services has also virtually killed the concept of an album. People don't make albums anymore. They don't make albums. They just try to sell a bunch of little quick singles and they burn out and they put out a new one and they burn out and they put out a new one. People don't even listen to a body of work anymore. The classic divas currency of power were their hugely successful albums and the streaming era emphasizes single tracks and playlists often geared for maximum streaming potential that has destroyed the grandiose album-centric narratives that defined the era of the divas. Now, we still have some enduring divas. Mariah's perennial Christmas classic reminds us of this. And Beyonce has positioned herself as a modern-day Tina Turner, but there's a notable change in the music world. And I'm curious, is this something you enjoy or not? By the way, if you enjoy Divas, I have an entire series of Mariah Carey that you might be right up your street. Thanks for watching.